The study of authoritarian regimes is an area that's been particularly neglected. More than two-thirds of the world lives in authoritarian regimes, and yet very little has been communicated to a mass audience about the differences between them. The truth is, is that authoritarian regimes are often just lumped into this one category where there's so many differences. It really matters who holds the power, whether it be a military, single party, single person, a ruling family, or some combination of these. And this has really important implications for foreign policy, the quality of intelligence, chances for economic growth, the mode of exit, and the chances for transitioning into a democracy. My research helps answer important questions about how transitions will take place in authoritarian regimes. And take the case of Egypt and Syria. Why did Egypt step down, and whereas Syria is hold, holding on to power to the bitter end? Well, the answer lies in looking at the structure of the military. Egypt's military is a national army. It had national legitimacy, and its recruitment methods were not based on sectarian or communal ties. This differs considerably with Syria. Syria's recruitment of the military was based on uh, recruiting those that were part of the Alawite community, a small sect that the Assad family is also a part of. And therefore, this military is going to be completely tied to the regime and to defending the regime at all costs. There's other important factors to mention as well. Egypt's military was tethered to the West, and therefore this limited their ability to really repress. Syria has absolutely no vested interest in maintaining ties with the West because there are no ties that actually even exist. This also explains why sanctions will not work in Syria and are not working. They have nothing to lose.